Well, Darcy Vessio may have been breaking records this weekend, but we have our own Irish record breaker on the line from Australia. The one and only Cora Staunton joins us from Sydney. Cora, delighted you could join us on the show. We'll talk about your record breaking uh, moments in a minute. But uh, first up, just about the weekend's game, a little bit disappointed not to get one over in the Blues. You've had a lot of games over the past few weeks, a little bit of fatigue creeping in. Uh, yeah, it was very disappointing um, that we didn't get the win over the Blues. Um, you know, that we were still in finals contention up to that, um, you know, up to that point. So, yeah, yeah, hugely disappointing. Um, I don't know if we can blame it on tiredness. Yeah, three, three games in eight days, it's tough. But, um, yeah, I think that the Blues are the better team on the day and we probably struggled around our midfield to get the ball forward. So, yeah, they're a very skillful team. They've had a hard run of it too this year. So, yeah, disappointed, but, you know, the, the, the nature of the game over here is that you have so many games and, you know, we, we're, we're out in six days again against Richmond. So, yeah, we just have to worry about that now. Um, Cora, so that, that kind of makes for three wins and five defeats for the season so far. How, how have you felt that the season's gone overall now that we're coming to the end of the home and away season? Yeah, so far it's been disappointing. Obviously, we we'd be looking for two wins, um, you know, in the final two games, and you know, you know, hopefully have an even split. But no, for us, you know, the goal at the start of the year is you not know, to make finals. Um, you know, we cannot do that now. So yeah, we'd be very disappointed in that. Um, you know, I think there's a gap between the real top teams and 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 the teams below us, and and the top teams probably being. The, the five that are at the top in, in Adelaide and, and North Melbourne and Melbourne um, and Brisbane Lions and, and, and missing out someone else there. Um, but, you know, the, the top five teams there are very, very strong. Um, you know, we obviously come up against, and Fremantle being the other, but we've come up against most of them, um, you know, on their top side. So, yeah, it's 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 a tricky one for the clubs that are kind of below them um, to, to, to try and get up to their level. You know, I think with expansion next year, or uh, next season coming, you know, it, it might in some way dilute some of the talent um, that's in them clubs and making an even keel. But, but it, it's it's very hard to know with obviously two new teams coming in in Melbourne, a team coming in here in, in Sydney and, and a new team coming in in Adelaide. You know, I think certainly for Adelaide pros, it's going to dilute them a, a little bit with Port Adelaide coming in. So, yeah, I think it's for, for the rest of the competition to get up to that kind of top five bracket. You know, I'm probably not putting Collingwood in that at the moment because they're a little bit out of form and, you know, even had two two pretty bad injuries yesterday. So, you know, while they'll probably make finals, they're probably going to struggle um, when it comes to finals. So, yeah, I think there's a gap between the, the top five teams and, and the rest of the competition at the moment. Cora, on a personal level, two goals again this weekend. And I heard earlier on today that with those two goals, apparently you've moved into the top five goal scorers of all time in the AFLW, which is even more impressive to the fact that you're up against players who've been playing there from, from day one. Um, are you happy with your own form this season and the way it's gone? Yeah, I'm, I, I've got to be happy enough in some aspects. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously a lot. You, you compare yourself a lot of the time to Gaelic football and how things go at home. And, you know, when, when the game isn't going on, on, on your team's terms, you, you really can't have an impact because you're a deep forward and you're, and you're kind of stuck to structure, you know, and even be well, well um, used to the word structure and all of that. So, you know, get up the ground and, and have an impact while, while you like to um, you're probably going to get uh, you know a, a good given out to you if you do so it's really all about you know playing your role and playing your structure so at times I, I find that really difficult that you know um, when you're set, certainly playing against the stronger teams the ball mightn't come in too often so um, yeah I suppose you have to develop a lot of patience in, in that regard and you know trust trust your teammates around the middle that'll come in so yeah like I suppose as a key forward, your role is to kick goals. Um, you know, and I suppose every year that um, I've come over, I've done that. And you know, in the last few years, you know, I've got I've got bigger numbers, and you know, hopefully, I finish with, with a higher 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 tally than I left the goals of the last two games in. So, yeah, um, you know, I suppose if you look at the top of the goal scoring charts, yeah, I'm up there. But I suppose for me, um, it, it's not about personal performance. You know, the, the biggest thing for me is I want the team to make finals and and and, and really pit ourselves against the top team and unfortunately we can't do that now. Um, one great thing about this season was Breed Stack finally got to make her debut. Um, she's she's going really well it seems but how nice has it been for you to have another Irish player, another Gaelic footballer over there with you? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing having um, the Irish um, over here as you know yourself. Um, you know, Goldie when you were there in, in Melbourne, um, yeah, we we're we're, diff we're different, so we are to the Australians, and that's not putting it in a, in a bad way. We're just a very different mindset. So, 
yeah, it's it's just good to have someone that you can connect with all the time and you know debrief and have chats with. You know, um, I suppose I've got to know Breed and, and her and her husband Korok and, and and obviously Ogi very well over the last two years. So we spend a lot of time together. Um, so yeah, it's it's brilliant, and you know I was delighted obviously that she um has got to obviously debut this year and been consistent and got to play all the games and she's grown in every game and, and really shown why the Giants want her out there. So yeah, from that point of view, um, I'm delighted. She, she's a bit like me, um, you know, but because of Gaelic football, it's a different game and, and I suppose it's certainly in Breed's case, she, she was used to winning a lot. Um, it, can, it can be frustrating at times and the game is very different. So, but yeah, yeah having, having her and Cork and, and Ogie out here is, you know, is, is, is brilliant. As I said, I'm, we're like, um, I'm part of their family out here. Um, you know, we, we kind of don't run one without the other. A, a bit like um, yourself and Goldie when you're in Melbourne, you know, th- of course you're going to stick to your own, um, which is great. And, you know, and her form this season has only got better and better. Cora, you've accomplished so much in your time in Australia. Uh, what's your goals? Are you keen to continue next? You mentioned the expansion. The league is, the standards are going up and up. There's more teams in next season. What's the future hold for you? Uh, that's a good question, Will. I'd say you're not the first person that's asked me that now in the last two weeks. Uh, certainly in the last 24 hours, <laughs> uh, I've had that question a few times. Uh, and I'm probably going to give you the very political answer like I give all the time. I play, obviously, the last two rounds of the season out. Um, probably have a little break here in Australia before I head home and, 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 and get back to, to life at home and, and get back to, to club football with Karen Nicon. Um and, you know, I, I, I'm sure I'll have to have the chat and sit down and talk to our head coach um, and, and see see where her I'm at. Um, I, you know, I've always kind of said to myself, I'll see how the body is, um, you know, see how the mind is and um, have I the drive to go again. Um, you know, at, at the moment, the body's holding up well, even though we're, we're playing a lot of games in a condensed period of time. You know, I've been lucky enough. I've managed to play all games when I've, when I've been out here. I haven't missed any, so... Yeah, um, you know, that it really, yeah, some of it's my decision, some of it's the club's decision, you know, what direction they want to go in, they want to hold on to me. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of wait and see. I, I kind of nearly nearly need to give myself a month at the end of the season to clear my head, get away from, from, from Sydney for a little while and get away from the club because it's very hard to make a decision when you're surrounded by it. Um, and, and, yeah, I probably have to make a decision Again, we don't know a lot with the the, the start uh, season start date for the season coming up. You know, the, it's rumored that preseason will start again in September and competition will start in November. You know, we're we're hitting March now, so um, you know that's only a couple of months away. You know, you say it's a new season; it's in the same year. Um, yeah, so we just I'll, I'll sit down with Al. Um, you know, in in a couple of weeks' time, and I'm, I'm sure. Um, He'll want an answer and see what what he um, you know sees for, for me going ahead and you know see where I'm at at that stage. Well, we certainly hope you do extend your stay. One question before we we finally let you go: um, Is it Adelaide to lose this year? They look pretty impressive. Who do you think is going to take the title? Melbourne. Yeah, <laughs> it's very hard to back against. Adelaide. Um, you know, they're 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 probably the best team we I, I've come up against this year have been over the last number of years. Um, like let's remember they 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 played at the weekend in, in Perth, which is not an easy place to go to without Aaron Phillips, the star of the of the, of the competition. Without Chelsea Randall, another star and their captain, they have played without her for the majority of the season. Um, by all by all accounts, both of them will be come back in, in in for finals. So, yeah, it's probably Adelaide to lose. Um, the next most impressive team after that team is Melbourne. So. Um, and you can see by the top of the table, they're, they're the two teams that, you know, top the table. So I'd be going for um, a Melbourne-Adelaide um, final. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably give a shout out to, to the Brisbane Lions. I, I don't know if you know all the news from there, but Oro Dyer went down with a shoulder injury yesterday. So a, a lot hinges on that for the Lions if Orla gets back up um, um, for, for finals and that as well, because she's been a key player for them. So... The Brisbane lines have been going very, very well. They could be the dark horse, but you know, a lot depends on Orla's injuries. But you know, if I'm a betting woman, it's it's, it's Adelaide and it's probably the final. Cora, well, I think we have our fingers crossed for Orla and hope that injury isn't isn't too bad. But thanks so much for joining us on this show, and best of luck to you and the Giants in the final few games of the season.